The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Thursday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 906 AM, 24 minutes to go until the start of trading and markets already off to the races in a big way to the upside right now. We have the S&Ps up nearly nine tenths percent. You're trading at 43.95. That's positive by 40 points even. NASDAQ 100 up more than 1%. You're talking about 1.05% up 155 points. You look at where we were early Wednesday, you're talking about more than 300 points from 3 a.m. Eastern time. We'll call it 14,600, actually below that level barely. We reach a high. You're talking about 14,948, 350 NASDAQ 100 points. The Dow's up 292 points. Look at the acceleration we got out of the gate yesterday. Actually below 34,000. We're now at 34,549 in the Dow and the Russell up by more than a percent as well. Positive by 23 points, trading at 2262. Bitcoin holding up relatively well. Another day of positive prices. We hit 59,000 overnight in Bitcoin. We're trading 57,925. Crude back up to near the highs. You're trading up 72 cents at 81.16, an 81 handle in crude. Natural gas right now at 580. Look at that volatility in natural gas continuing. From last week at 587 down to 516, we're back in the 580 range this morning on natural gas. Gold continuing to catch a bid. All the markets, quite an interesting reversal yesterday. Uh, you trade down lower to below 1760 in the price of gold yesterday, accelerate higher. We're holding on to those gains today, up $3 in gold at 1797. Silver is up 25 cents at 2342. And we jump to notes and bonds. We're getting a little bit of higher price, lower yield. You're talking about a yield right now of 1.5. 3%, 1 1.53% on the 10-year. You're positive by seven ticks at 131.14. The 30-year is positive by three ticks at 159.24. Let's check out the volatility index this morning. Uh, we get some jo initial jobless claims numbers out this morning. Look at that retreat of volatility under 18. I think that's the first time we've been under 18 in a while. Uh, yeah, you got to back things up to September 27th. It's October 14th, folks. Uh, quite an extended period to remain over 18. And you look where we are. I mean, you're at territory. We haven't been in in the VIX. Remarkably, back to September 10th, we have not seen a 1750 price in the VIX since September 10th, more than a month ago. Uh, volatility really sucking out as we begin earnings season. Let's jump over to some of the headlines as we kick things off. We'll start it off with jobless claims, initial jobless claims. We're talking about the lowest level since basically prior to the pandemic, March of 2020, as things were really beginning to unfold. Uh, below 300,000, the number comes in at 293,000, a decrease of 36,000. From the prior week, the median estimate that economists were looking for at Bloomberg was 320000 So slightly below that number, the trend is your friend on that chart for sure to lower prices in terms of lower initial jobless claims you go. Uh, on an unadjusted basis, initial claims rose about 16000 from the prior week. You had many states, California, Michigan, Missouri, New Mexico posted large increases. Hear that one? Large increases. Not what you wanted to see, though, on there. Tennessee, Texas, and Florida, among those with the biggest decreases out there. Continuing claims, that's a one-week delay. Okay, so that's the week ended October 2nd, dropping to 2.6 million for the week ended. Uh, and I believe we're still dealing with um, jumping back to the CNBC article because they actually tell us how many we're talking about. Uh, on a continuing claim basis, declined 134,000 to 2.59 million. Another pandemic era low is how they put it. All right, let's jump around to some of the earnings. We got bank earnings. We got Bank of America, Citigroup, Morgan Stanley, Wells Fargo all out today. Let's jump around to their charts real quick. Uh, got to keep track of them all. Bank of America shares, you're trading higher this morning. We'll jump over to the news in a moment, but you're up to 44.30. We have Citigroup, I think they're almost all trading higher. Citigroup trading higher today as well, up to 71.15. So Morgan Stanley, there it is. Morgan Stanley up almost $2 uh, to 125. And Wells Fargo out as well, catching a 
a little bit of a bid up to 46 44 now getting into the numbers huge numbers across the board uh topping estimates we'll start with bank of america they earn 85 cents versus 71 cents expected how about revenue more than a billion dollars more than they were looking for in 90 days there's the reason why you're accelerating higher two percent to three percent pop on the banks is a big move uh, for the banks on earnings. Not as much volatility as definitely some of the growth stocks. Revenue, though, beats by a billion. Earnings, as I mentioned, beats by 14 cents. Profits surged 58% to 7.7 .7 billion or 85 cents a share as revenue climbed 12%. Now, you got to remember just for a moment where we were a year ago. Let's pull up the 10 year, let's pull it on. A three-year weekly, we're trading at 131.14, that is October. You back things up to October of last year, and you had the 10-year, I mean, you back it up to early October, you had the 10-year, 138.25, right? When they were reporting last year, they were reporting for the prior three months. The prior three months, banks were dealing with yields at about half percent. So dealing with some very friendly comps, it's the reason why you've seen some of these banks uh, accelerate higher. There's Wells Fargo. We were just talking about Bank of America, so let's keep it there. Bank of America, as you see, last October, that's where the run really began when yields turned around. You were chopping around at 25. Yeah, you grow that number 58%. You Now you're trading at $44 on Bank of America with their numbers. Citigroup, profit surge 48%, just big numbers across the board. Trading revenue was a big one out here as well, uh, as long as, along with fees, some of the investment bank fees that some of these banks collected. 215 on earnings per share, 17.15 billion. The market was looking for a buck 65 on 16.97 billion. So City beats Morgan Stanley beats estimates on record investment banking and asset management results. There you go. So revenue, I mean it's just amazing. They're decimal points, but 750 million dollars they beat on revenue. 14.75 versus 14 expected. Now remember, expectations were high for these banks and they're all trading higher. That's a tough one. Uh to get done but they did earnings a buck 98 versus a buck 68 they're trading higher today as well uh another very strong quarter this is their ceo standout performance in integrated investment bank and record new assets of 135 billion in wealth management uh let's see net income jumping 25 percent equities trading jumping 24 percent to 2.88 billion market was looking for less than 500 million from that number so what it was looking 2.38 or something to that degree fixed income revenue dropping though to 16 percent to 1.64 billion remember the fixed income number number some of these banks were coming out with back then that's one of the areas they did have some strength there uh, investment banking, here you go, right? The investment banking franchise delivered in the quarter, posting a 67% increase in revenue to a record 2.85 billion. That's more than a $600 million beat from the expectations, mergers, and advisory fees. And we'll finish it up with Wells Fargo for our banks. Wells Fargo, the headline there, profit jumps nearly 60% in the quarter. Revenue tops expectations. Uh, net income, 5.1 billion. A 59% increase. Earnings, a buck 22 versus 99 cents. And revenue, they beat by almost $500 million total. $18.83 billion versus $18.35 billion. You had a reserve release here as well of $1.65 billion. Uh, as I showed, all the banks trading higher in a big way. Wells Fargo up about 30 cents. Uh, and you see, up more than 100% from where we were last November. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got S&Ps up by 40 points. We're coming back talking to our man Kevin Hanks from TD Ameritrade Fast Market. We got a lot more to talk about. We'll be right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps up an even 40 points right now. You're talking about 9 tenths percent in the positive. NASDAQ 100 up an even 1 percent, trading up 147 points. The Dow up 9 tenths percent as well, and the Russell up more than 1 percent right now as we got about 12 minutes to go until the opening bell. We got some bank earnings this morning. We have some initial jobless claims number going back uh, record numbers back to March of last year. Let's uh, jump over to our man Kevin Hinks from TD Ameritrade Fast Market. Every trading day, folks, noon Eastern time, Kevin Hinks, Tom White, breaking down the market action, walking you through hypothetical trade setups in the option market. We're coming into earnings season, folks. Great time to check out the program. Uh, Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yep, there's a lot of things going on in this market today. Uh, market feels pretty good about some of the data it's getting, both in economic data and in earnings, Tommy. So jobless claims now has a two-handle. PPI came in uh, at some pretty muted lower levels. You've got all the banks hitting on earnings this morning. You've got United Healthcare hitting on earnings this morning. So uh, this market is starting to feel pretty good about itself, Tommy. You know, Kevin, if you said to me yesterday with expectations pretty high for the banks, rightfully so, with yields rising, especially from where we were a year ago, um, Bank of America, Citigroup, Morgan Stanley, Wells Fargo, all of them would be trading higher today, this morning. Pretty remarkable. Uh, and their numbers kind of point towards it. Some pretty strong numbers from the banks. Uh, one of the things that kind of strikes me as interesting, Kevin, is you're not seeing the types of themes that we've all been talking about, though, that might persist later, maybe in the earnings season, uh, as banks. Their product is money, man. They're shipping money across uh, across lines, and that's not getting the way of supply chains. Obviously, wages could have been an issue, but they beat on earnings in a big way. But as you talked about, across the board, almost everywhere else, uh, we've talked about the initial jobless claims number. A healthy economy is in the 200s, Kevin. So we're back to 200s right now in terms of a 293 number and the PPI number as well. Pretty soft. Uh, with all of that, we got CPI data yesterday. I mean, the S&P, Kevin, we were chatting it yesterday. We thought we were getting a bounce in the market. You gave it up briefly. But you look at the S&P. My goodness, we're now about 75 points above where we were trading at at 10 a.m. yesterday. What are you looking at uh, for this market that's pretty relentlessly strong this morning? Yeah, this market is feeding off a lot of positive economic data, Tommy. And now we're, you know, to Thursday in the week. And what does that mean for the rest of the week? Well, you know, there's not, you know, there, there's some, you know, we still get re retail sales tomorrow and we'll still get some 
consumer sentiment numbers tomorrow. But what appears to me, what I'm thinking as I look at this market and how it's unfolding is when the when the jobs number came out, right, last Friday, and you can make the case that when it was measured in mid-September, maybe it was too early to be looking too early to measure. Remember, they, they measure the numbers that come with non-farm payrolls about mid-month. Sure. And maybe it was too early to add some of those numbers that we shouldn't have expected such a big number, or it's more lumpy. But you may, might be seeing this market start to unthaw this labor market right now as we speak. So some of the high-frequency data coming in, like jobless claims, you know, that are down pretty significantly here in the last two weeks from the 350 level down to now below 293. So uh, I think this is a market that, you know, the banks didn't disappoint. You've got United Healthcare up big this morning. So this market looks pretty healthy to start the day, Tommy. It's, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be fun. Now we move on though, right? We've got one more uh, earnings from a financial that's Goldman Sachs tomorrow morning. We'll cover that on the first segment of Fast Market today, and then we move on. We start getting into some of the teeth. Well, uh, the rest of the show, we're going to look at Netflix and Disney today, the streamers. And so we're, we're moving on to from the financials to the next stop along the way, which is some big, high-profile earnings coming out next week and the week after that, Sammy. And that's pretty cool, man. I didn't even realize that Netflix is out. So I'm on the Thinkorswim platform. I jump over to the Analyze tab, the Earnings tab, October 19th. Uh, they're out with their numbers. Have you seen the, the show Squid Game yet, Kevin? I do. I have not seen it. It doesn't I, look sound like something that's in my wheelhouse. But I have to tell you, I think that, you know, I see everything through the prism of trading, Tommy, as you know. And if you think about this. When you look at a company like Netflix, where is their growth? It may not be in the United States is where they're thinking to grow. So internationally, this show fits perfect into that scenario of growing internationally. Tommy, there's 1.4 billion people in China, and Netflix is not in China. So international growth is where this company is going to go to the next level. I think that's why you're seeing this stock run, and that's why you're seeing – People connecting the dots with the popularity of that show and the future of Netflix, Tommy. It makes sense, man. And and I, disclosure, man, I got roped into it, Kevin, in the family. We're watching it. And uh, I don't normally watch dubbed shows, too, because it's just kind of tough with the, the words not matching up to the lips sometimes. Sure. So it really spoke to the fact I got sucked into it. Uh, it was a pretty interesting show. Uh, the numbers, though as you speak to are staggering i the number i was reading yesterday was some like 111 million people have watched that within the first 28 or 30 days record break in the prior record they had kevin was in like the 80s or something just smashed sure. the record out of the books um and you think about the number of amazing shows netflix has had for it to kind of crush that record it just speaks to you know the kind of control they have in terms of just you put out a product and it just uh here we are talking about it right myself a guy what, in his 40s what does that all come back to tommy their their pricing right their ability sure. to raise prices in the future it was for the value that i enjoyed it the house enjoyed it you know i mean it's it's not much money man if you can get into a couple shows a month or, or, right. or a couple shows every few months for sure netflix up to 629 and disney we have disney in my newsletter uh quite a consolidation man they have some catching up to do uh yep. be really interesting when they come out now when are they out with their numbers uh, they're out with their Later. numbers november 10th uh but it'd be interesting for them. They have a lot more to talk about, I imagine, this earnings season, man, whether it's with wages, parks, right, and the likes that Netflix doesn't have to deal with. Well, Kevin, we appreciate the conversation as always, man. I imagine it's going to be an interesting day in the markets as always. S&P positive by 40 points. And uh, we'll be looking forward to the discussion on Goldman Sachs and then, of course, on some streaming action with Netflix kicking things off next week. Thanks so much, Kevin. Have a great day, man. We'll be watching at noon today. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. My pleasure, as always, Kevin. Folks, tune in. You heard them. They're talking Goldman Sachs to kick things off. They'll be out with their numbers tomorrow. Goldman, let's jump over. Now, Goldman, they're going to have a little lofty expectations. Things get raised when you got your competitors coming out with their numbers. There's Goldman. Yesterday, 378 at the low. We close it out at 386. They're positive by more than a percent right now with the market. Uh, they'll have to live up to those expectations tomorrow morning. All expectations are that they will, considering all their competitors pretty much trading higher uh, as we go into that. And then Netflix versus Disney. Uh,
Uh, if you're looking for a program, folks, check it out. Not for the faint of heart, that uh, Squid Game. Pretty graphic violence uh, in it. Uh, has to do with, it's a South Korean uh, show, and it has to do with a, uh, people play children's games for millions of dollars, and if you lose, you die. Pretty simple premise. Uh, nonetheless, it's taken over Netflix. Just staggering when you think, though. $111 million and some of the biggest budget productions that Netflix has done. I think Bridgerton was number two, which I have not seen, but I've seen it in terms of just the production value. It looks pretty staggering, the, the, the production um, quality that they put into that program. Only did like $80 million. It's, you know, just a staggering beat. Uh, that shows what Netflix can put out. And just like Kevin says, you know, if you're providing that much value, you got pricing power at the prices they're dealing with. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back for the market open. S&P is positive by 40. We'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Chart allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. We got the S&P trading a couple points higher on the open. We're positive by 43 right now. NASDAQ 100 positive by 152. The Dow surging. How about up 400 points on the Dow? 34,651 right now. And the Russell up a percent to $23 in the positive 2261. Let's jump over to commodities. Crude holding steady above 81 bucks. Just had a little bit of a drop off, though, at 9 o'clock. 
dropped about 50 pennies from where we were. Gold contract right now, holding steady right at 1800 on the dot. And let's jump around to some of those banks real quick and see how they're opening up. You got Bank of America shares trading even higher, up 3.3% right now. Morgan Stanley shares up 2.4%. Citigroup up 1.1%. Wells Fargo shares up 1.5%. And Goldman tomorrow, 1.8%. They're getting priced up ahead of their numbers tomorrow morning. Now, what else we have for earnings? We got Domino's Pizza. Kind of the one, let's see, I was going to say the one negativity today, but guess what? Give it some time, folks. Let's see how it opens. No, nah, still negative. Down 3.3% Domino's from about 475 to 456. Let's jump over to the headline for Domino's Pizza. We'll pull my chart up over here. All right. And there we go. So same store sales turn negative. Uh, so there's uh, the reason why they're not finding a bid. Was down 5% pre-market. The top analyst estimates for the third quarter earnings, uh, revenue fell short of estimates and same store sales turned negative. Don't want to see same store sales turn negative uh, if you are an investor or long term investor. High demand for pizza during the pandemic has caused investors to worry about pizza fatigue. Folks, pizza, pizza fatigue. Come on. No such thing. Uh, and tough comparisons against last year's performance. Pizza, not the healthiest product, uh, but no such thing as pizza fatigue, uh, at least uh, for myself. Uh, I could think I could live off pizza. Domino's, they got pretty good pizza, too. I like their thin crust pizza. Uh, I do. And they got great deals, man. Two pizzas, uh, $5.99 each. That's the thing. They, they allow you two products for $5.99 each. Um, it's a pretty decent deal. And that's been, you know, they really uh, put it together quite a business plan as they were able to Increase the technology of the company. You could follow along your order. They priced it appropriately for that, and they were able to compete. But guess what? U.S. same-store sales shrank by 1.9%. The metric, though, up 15.6% on a two-year basis. There's some nice context, okay? Uh, the market was looking for, though, same-store sales growth of 1.8%. So not what you expected. Now, Domino's, there's the action today. Let's back it up three week, three years. Excuse me. You back it up three years. All right, now they just gave us two-year comps up 15%, okay? You back it up two years, and you've almost doubled the stock price, okay? So, yes, those are staggering comps on a two-year basis, but you better believe they are because the stock is breaking from 240 to 460, uh, still showing 15% same-store sales growth. I don't imagine that you're going to see uh, pizza fatigue, but really tough to compete with comps going into last year when last year – that was a tough summer we had, whether July to October. You had no um, vaccine efficacy just yet. And nonetheless, Domino's trading off its high at 548 from their last earnings when they really crushed it. Now, this, folks, is a lesson in not chasing stocks. It trades from 319, the then gangbusters up to 548. Well, you give it three months, and we're actually under those prices at 460, 268. Got a little bit ahead of itself in a big way. And uh, as Kevin said, Walgreens. Uh, no, United Health is positive, but Walgreens is out with their numbers. Walgreens Boots. Let's jump over to their numbers real quick before we get to United Health. Uh, tops estimates: Drugstore gives twice as many COVID vaccines as expected. Uh, beat expectations on the fourth quarter. Got a lift from COVID-19 shots and tests, and saw rebounding demand for over-the-counter medication. Uh, they have an investor day on Thursday. Is that uh, today they're talking about? Interesting there. Yeah, where well, they'll lay out the plans for the year ahead. 13.5 million vaccines during the three-month period, double the seven they were looking for. Uh, Delta variant probably accelerating that a bit. They shaved two billion dollars in annual costs from its business. They earned a buck seventeen versus a dollar oh two, and they beat on revenue by almost one billion dollars in 90 days. Net income 627 million bucks uh, from 3373 a year earlier. Yeah, big numbers for Walgreens Boots, and you're trading up about half a percent. And as Kevin had mentioned, United Health, check out that acceleration up 6.7%. You take a look at the three year weekly. This thing's just been nonstop from 187 at the COVID lows. You started off 2020 at about 300. I think that's an all time high that we just put up. Let's back it up. It sure is. Look at this run from 50 bucks back in basically 2010. Yeah, 30 bucks in 2010 to 430 bucks right now on United Health shares. All right, let's jump around to what else we got going on. They're talking about Bitcoin a little bit in the YouTube Tigers Dan Can't help but talk a little bit Bitcoin when you're up at 58,000. Check out this run, right? You put this thing on a daily. 
We retrace a 50%. Now, this is just going from the run we had in July when Bitcoin was under 30,000. Okay. Now, if you're talking about an A to B, C to D, let's call your A point about 30,000. You know, you could call it 29,200. For simple math, we're going to call it 30,000. We're going to call the B point 52.5. Simple math, 22,500. And what do we got here? We got to pull back to 40,000. Point being A to B, C to D, that would bring us up to about 62,500. Okay right near that all-time high you're talking about on 65,520 dating back to the day coinbase goes public let's check out coinbase on that coinbase sitting at about 250 uh they got this thing out to the public <laughs> remarkable right uh, i think the reference price was 250 uh, because it was a direct listing okay but talk about the market waking up to the valuation of this company how long did it take this is a weekly bar it took one week two week three week four week five maybe six weeks to figure out that this thing should probably be trading between about 200 and 275 should not be trading between 300 and 400 uh coinbase even with bitcoin surging back to those highs you're not seeing the action in Coinbase. There's probably a lot of investors in Coinbase. Now, yes, you've got a pop. You're up 10% from where you were last week. Let's put it back to a daily since you can see the full run there. Okay, so you go public on April 14th. And uh, by about the middle of May, the market had figured out that probably you should be between about 225 and 275. You're sitting right in the middle of that range right now at 250. But there's got to be a lot of disappointed investors, folks, in Coinbase. When you look at the run that we've had in all of these, whether it's Ethereum or Bitcoin. Now, Ethereum shares, which is interesting, not back up above the September high, right? Ethereum, September, you're at 4,000. Okay. You check out Bitcoin. September highs were what? Let me get that off. September highs, you're talking about 53,000. We're now 4,000 above there. So you're seeing a little bit of divergence in some of these equities. You got Bitcoin within about 8,000 bucks of its all time high. Ethereum shares within about 600 bucks. Both of those, uh, you're talking about almost 10 or 15%, though, from the all time highs of 4,400. And Coinbase, though, as I said, be careful on Coinbase here because they will be around. But man, they got some valuations that are. Um, nearing the stupid level is, is one way to put it. $53 billion market cap for this company. Uh, remember when they were talking about $100 billion market cap when, when they were coming out? Be careful of some of those uh, numbers, folks. All right, let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks, see how we're trading this morning. Tesla shares, positive prices we go, up another 6 tenths percent. Look at this run Tesla's had, man. Since May, you were at 563. Yeah, is that the low? 546. 546, you're sitting at 816. Next stop's probably 900 bucks for Tesla shares. We'll jump to the second richest man in the world, Amazon, Jeff Bezos, up uh, about a half a percent. Microsoft was higher pre-market. Yeah, up by about six tenths percent. Apple shares right now up by about eight tenths percent. Google shares, look at that. Google up 1.5%, trying to make its way back in that uptrend channel. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large-cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps pretty much right where we started off the session 12 minutes ago, trading at 4396. You're positive by about 42 points. You get the Dow up 335, NASDAQ 100 up 167. If you head on over to the front page of TFNN, folks, next Tuesday, we're talking about five days from right now. Mr. Basil Chapman, he is going to be hosting a webinar for opening call subscribers in five days, Tuesday, 4 till 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. So that'll be a 90-minute webinar. If you haven't checked out his service, Daily trading service, the opening call, folks. Basil does an outstanding job. Check it out on the front page of TFNN. You can sign up now. You gain access to the opening call. Uh, you'll be able to access the archives. He's got about six, seven, eight archived webinars in there for subscribers that you can watch. You'll have access to the live webinar Tuesday. What to prepare for into year's end and what sectors to focus on now, right to the point of the action. What should we be looking at for the year end and what sectors is Basil focusing on? Uh, Will there still be higher highs in 2021, and where will they be? What stock, sectors, what stock sectors and ETFs are we focusing on? What patterns and Chapman wave notations are becoming more important? Are there any buy and hold positions we're attempting? And best part of it, send your questions right to Basil that you'd like him to take a look at. Maybe you're thinking about something. Maybe you're thinking about uh, certain sectors, certain equities. Send them to Basil Chapman at TFNN.com for subscribers. He will answer them during that webinar, Tuesday night, 4 till 5.30. New subscribers get a money back, 30-day uh, money back guarantee. So check that out on the front page of TFNN. All right, jumping back to crypto real quick. Let me make sure. Where's my article here? Oh, come on. I had it up here. All right. I'll, oh, there we go. Perfect. Uh, so you have the Bank of England's Deputy Governor for Financial Stability, John Cunliffe. I'm not familiar. Um, but he makes the case warning. And when you got bank officials in any capacity, folks, OK, uh, has warned that cryptos could spark a global financial crisis unless tough regulations are introduced. The one thing I want to bring up from this um, there's a valid argument when you look about the amount of wealth created in such a short period of time and the volatility that persists within the cryptocurrency sector. If you ever saw that volatility at such lofty valuations of market capitalization disappear, there could be a reverberation throughout the market. You have, and he linked, the rate of growth in the crypto asset market from $16 billion just five years ago to $2.3 trillion today, uh, and he's linking it, likening it, excuse me, to the $1.2 trillion subprime mortgage market in 2008. We just saw Bitcoin get cut in half, folks. Uh, Ethereum cascaded with it as well. When you start talking about trillions of dollars and you start talking about now, you have trillions of dollars, uh, maybe it's going to be placed in ETF structures that allows consumers to have access to that. You see that type of wealth 
wiped away. There is the fear that when something in the financial system is growing very fast and growing in largely unregulated space, financial stability authorities have to step up, sit up, and take notice. Uh, we'll see where that goes, but regulators probably keeping their eyes on it, I imagine so. And uh, just something to keep in mind because – that is $2.3 trillion of wealth that sits out there today that is real wealth to the people that own that cryptocurrency. And if you see a cascading notion in terms of those markets disappearing, in terms of the value of those markets cascading lower, you could see a rever reverberation throughout other markets, uh, let alone you start getting not the type of margin calls, but maybe that wealth disappears and maybe other portions of investments are predicated off of that wealth, which is really where the run could begin. Okay, jumping around to what else? How about we jump to foreclosures? Surging now, the COVID mortgage bailouts are ending, but they're still at low levels. Uh, yearly comps, not really fair at all because foreclosures weren't happening at all during the pandemic as you had bailouts and moratoriums. Uh, foreclosure starts jumped 32% in the third quarter of the year from the second quarter, 67% higher than the third quarter of 2020. Uh, when you get into the states with the largest number of foreclosures, California, Texas, Florida, New York, and Illinois, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the number of active forbearance plans fell by 177,000. You had an 84,000 plan drop among FHA and BA loans as of October 5th. Nearly 1.4 million borrowers remain in pandemic-related forbearance plans, representing 2.6 of all active mortgages. Not that bad of a number when you consider it uh, out there. Housing prices, of course, helping that one out, folks, because, man, you probably got a lot of equity in your house in certain cities, depending on where you are. Uh, even if you are on tough times, maybe that allows you to either sell the house or maybe you tap that equity to pay for some of the forbearance or the mortgages that you couldn't handle. But nonetheless, those out there. Uh, all right, let's jump to this story. So this is an opinion piece from Bloomberg. Uh, John Authors, again, not really familiar, but the numbers in here, you know, and they make the case, he makes the case over here. Uh, no getting around it. The September data have dashed any hopes that inflation is transitory. Inflation is the word of the hour. Word of the day, word of the month, word of the year, probably. Uh, inflation, this time it's personal, as they put it. Now, you get into some of these numbers here. We all saw them. So this is the number we're talking about, uh, inflation rate, talking about CPI. Those are the numbers that we got yesterday. You had a headline number of 5.4%. The core is still about 4% year over year. You are dealing with some tough cops year over year because look at the inflationary numbers in 2020 that you're comping out against, okay? You really had a decline there the first time we had that since 2016. And just scroll down uh excluding everything you want to buy and it's still not wait not great and it's a great way to put it right if you exclude food shelter energy and used cars and trucks it's at the highest in 28 years and that's excluding all of that think about that right that's the whole rhetoric in terms of food shelter energy huge prices in a big way and nonetheless still it's at a high that we haven't seen in 28 years, excluding all those things. It's still above 3% and barely down from its peak, and it's still at a level not seen in 28 years. Now let's look at the trimmed mean they go over uh, rate of inflation as produced by the Cleveland Fed. So this excludes the main outliers in both directions, okay, whatever they are. So you exclude an outlier to the upside and the downside. Uh, economists consider this a good and rigorous measure of underlying inflation, and it's very high yet again. You look at where we are across the board. The trim mean rose very sharply for the third month in a row, far above 3%, with the exception of two months during the worst of the oil spike that preceded the global financial crisis in 28. It's the highest in 30 years. Uh, they go down the line over and over, folks. Uh, now, the one that I wanted to conclude with Nothing like the 70s. Look at the 70s, my goodness. Now, I was born in 1980. I got some U.S. savings bonds when I was a child in 1980, and man, those percentages were awesome on my U.S. savings bonds in 1980. Uh, cashed them in uh, like 10 years ago, seven years ago, something like that. Uh, nothing like that, though, when you put it on a chart, so keep things in context. Context is important to see what the 70s and the 80s actually look like on that chart as we talk about highest levels in 30 years, et cetera. And to finish that up, 
Here's another part, article from CNBC, and it just goes over prices continue to rise. Here's what's getting the most expensive. We're all familiar with the big ones up there. Rental cars, staggering numbers, 43%. Gas is on the rise in a big way with crude higher. Used cars, 24%. But look at the others. Hotels, 18%. TVs, 12%. Furniture, 11 Food, when you're talking meat, poultry, fish, and eggs, healthy stuff out there. Protein, up more than 10%. Appliances, 7%. Electricity, something we all use 5.2 percent restaurant prices rent rent at 2.9 depending on where you are that number is 20 percent plus stay tuned folks we'll be right back to finish up the show sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument you have to practice sure but you also need excellent instruction from experts at TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis the tiger first mortgage program may be the program for you the best rate on a five-year cd in the country right now according to bankrate.com is paying one percent per year or one thousand dollars per one hundred thousand dollars invested the tiger first mortgage program pays seven percent per year paid monthly on secured high value buildable properties in st petersburg florida the investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets in positive territory to say the least. S&P's right now up a full percent, 43.98, nearing that 4,400 price mark. Remember, just yesterday, you're talking about 80, 80 S&P points in the last 24 hours. Excuse me, and jump around to what else we have. Crude holding above those highs in terms of $80. We're sitting at 80.72. Gold in the positive by about two bucks as well. And don't forget, folks, coming up next, our man Basil Chapman with the opening call. Head on over to the front page. You can check out Basil's daily trading service, the opening call. You can get a month, 30 day money back guarantee. You've got nothing to risk. You gain access to Basil's webinar taking place Tuesday. October 19th, five days from right now. And like I said, the moment you sign up, folks, check it out right now because you sign up, you gain access to the service. Basil puts 
updates out every trading day. He also puts updates usually out over the weekend. He's been doing videos for subscribers on Saturdays sometimes. You'll gain access to all that. So check it out on the front page of TFNN. And don't forget, Basil's up next with the opening call at 10 o'clock. We've got our man Larry Pesvento coming up at 11. Fast market at 12. They'll be talking some Goldman Sachs. Let's jump over to Goldman Sachs with their numbers tomorrow. Whoa, what happened here? Goldman. <laughs> Looks like lofty expectations. Not so much. Let's jump around these other banks then. Yeah. So look at the banks giving it up. Bank of America up 1.3% right now. City in the red. Ooh, a little bit of a give back. Let's see what notes are doing. What's going on with these banks? They give it up in a big way. No real reaction on notes to have that type of a dive. But all the banks, a little lofty. Um, in the pre-market, Wells Fargo now down 2%. You got Morgan Stanley barely flat, just traded down 3 bucks. Bank of America shares uh, up 1.5%. And as a city right now in the red by about 3%. Quite a little reversal by the banks uh, as they all beat in pretty dramatic fashion. And guess what? The market on the open says not so fast. Uh, but it does not say that for tech stocks as growth stocks. To the moon we go. NASDAQ 100 up 1.2% right now, up 179 points. We're coming near 15,000 yet again. Uh, almost like that whole run of almost 400 plus points from last week did not matter. Let's finish it up with the VIX as this market plows higher. 1750 on that VIX. Stay tuned, folks. You got Basil up next, Larry at 11, Fast Market at 12, Steve Rhodes, Dave White, and Tom O'Brien. My dad wraps it up live from three till four. Thanks for starting your day with me, folks. Stay tuned for Basil Chapman. He's coming up next. We'll be right back.